Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. My name is Nathaniel Dodson and today we're going to talk about how to get your 4K video through Premiere exported ready to go up onto YouTube so you can share it with the world. And before we jump into the video, I just got to let you know this video is sponsored by Skillshare. They've got some awesome content over there to help us get better at doing all this creative stuff we talked about. I got a link down in the bio that you can check out. First 250 people, you can get two months of Skillshare for free. Check it out and let's check this out and get into this tutorial. All right, here we are in Premiere Pro, and I want to cover the gamut, kind of getting started with a 4K project all the way through exporting it. It's all pretty simple, and if you get it right from the start, you're going to be pretty good to go all along the way. So here I've got in my project, I'm going to say File New and choose a new sequence. And here in the new sequence, I typically work here in the digital SLR realm. Uh, sometimes I wander in the DNX HD and things like that, but we'll just go DSLR 1080p. I'm going to say 24 frames a second. It's really 23970 and six, which is what I'm working with. However, I'm working with 4K footage and this is 1920 by 1080. So we want to come up here and choose settings. And here under settings, we are going to say, hey, frame size, we want you to be 3840 by 2160, right? It's that resolution we know and love so well. Everything else here, I'm going to leave the same. Uh, the one thing that you may want to think about if you're working with footage that's over 8-bit depth, 10-bit footage, for instance, you may want to just tick on maximum bit depth. That way, uh, Premiere Pro is going to show you the full glory of your 10-bit footage. Particularly important if you're going to be doing color grading with some color lumetry stuff here in Premiere. Just something to think about. And here for sequence name, I'm just going to say 4K YouTube or something. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And we'll come over here and drag out this nice shot of Hawaii provided to me by my buddies at savagestock.net. They've got a lot of really cool cinematic stuff over there. And then I'm going to throw just a quick soundtrack underneath it, and I will just trim that back to the end of our little bit of footage. Now, let's say this is what you're working with. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set an in and an out point. So I'm going to hit the letter I where I want my video to begin, and then I'm going to move all the way to the end of my clip and hit the letter O. That's going to set the out point. We've now sort of selected a portion of our timeline. This is the bit that we want to export. I want to take a moment here and give our sponsor, Skillshare.com, a quick shout out. We appreciate him for helping out and supporting our channel. Uh, check out Skillshare.com and specifically check out the course DIY Cinematography, Make Your Video Look Like a Movie by Ryan Booth. It's a fun course. It's packed with information. It's not even 45 minutes long. And premium Skillshare memberships, they begin at around $10 a month. But again, for the first 250 people, use that link down in the description. You can get two months of Skillshare for free, and those spots go quickly. It's first come, first serve, so you might want to check it out before they're all gone. Let's get back to this tutorial and finish this thing up. So with our sequence selected, we're going to go File, we're going to choose Export, and we're going to choose Export Media. And now here in this dialog box, the first thing that I want to go ahead and make sure is set properly is this source range down here at the bottom, source range. Uh, by default, you're going to have an entire sequence. I work with sequence in to out. That's exactly what we just set as our in and out points. Even on bigger projects, sometimes I'll have a lot of other junk scattered around my timeline, and I only want to export this chunk that's the video that I want to show the client or upload to YouTube or whatever. So it's really useful to have those in out points. All right. Now, a lot of times we work with some other formats, but for YouTube, generally at this point in time, H.264 is probably the best and easiest, most straightforward way to go. They're kind of moving along toward H.265, which takes a lot more computing power to render, but it's a much smaller, easier to upload file. But it's you want to, at least as of right now, the end of 2018, we're still hanging out with H.264 being probably the best thing for us. You want to make sure you choose to export both video and audio. You can click the output name and just name your file, whatever you like, choose where you want to save it on your hard drive. It's a nice idea too. Uh, you can keep an eye on the summary. It's going to show you what you're working with here where, where like the source files in the editor. So it's saying that the, the video is 3840 by 2160 at 23976 and so on and so forth. And then it'll show you what you're outputting. This is useful because if you notice you're outputting a 720p video, you can go in and make some adjustments and fix whatever's messed up. All right. There's a, a few different options you have here effects, video, audio, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to jump into audio. I'm going to actually stretch out my dialog box a little bit to give us a little bit more working room. I'm going to work with AAC, AAC 48,000 hertz stereo, audio quality high. I mean, just go with high, right? Because why not? Bit rate of 320 because we want bit rate. We want a lot of information in there.
there. And the advanced settings here, we're going to keep bitrate ticked on uh, to ensure maximum quality here. All the rest of this stuff I'm not going to mess with. I'm just going to jump to the video tab. And here I can just check and make sure, for instance, that my exported video is going to have the same width and height of my source. If not, you can uncheck this and punch it in. Uh, frame rate looking good, 23.976. Uh, everything else looks great. You can choose to render at maximum bit depth. Um, I'm not going to do that right here. It can be a good idea to do that if you have a lot of high contrast scenes in your video. And then here for your encoding settings, the main thing I'm concerned with here is that my level is like 5.1 or 5.2. So we can make sure that we can work with the higher bit rate. And the bit rate here is probably the most important thing. So your bit rate settings. A quick way to think about this, CBR stands for constant bit rate. The bit rate never changes. The bit rate essentially, to really simplify it, is just the amount of information that's allowed to be used in every second of your footage. So if you crank it way up, you can get a really, really high quality film, but the file size is going to be absolutely massive. Constant bitrate allows you to set a bitrate, let's say of 65 megabits per second, and it will maintain that all across your export. Variable bitrate, what it will do is you, you set your target bitrate, notice it's target, not just bitrate, and it'll use a certain amount of that as sort of the smart engine in Premiere looks at your video and says, oh, there's not too much moving stuff or there's not too much detail in this scene. Maybe we only have to use 10 megabits for this scene. So variable bitrate can get you a smaller video file. Sometimes it compromises quality, but I mean, unless you're nitpicking, you're probably not going to see a huge difference. And VBR, variable bitrate to pass, does exactly what one pass does, but it looks at it all a second time just to make sure that it optimizes the video perfectly. What I've noticed is VBR 2 pass does not tend to make a smaller file size. It usually ends up delivering a marginally higher quality video. So it's a little better. And I've even seen some people debate the merit of a second pass altogether. And they seem to think one pass is okay. I don't really have an opinion either way. I typically go with VBR 2 pass. It is doing a second pass. So rendering takes twice as long, but I like quality as well. Uh, constant bit rate is the highest quality, but also the highest file size. So if you don't care about the file size and you just want absolute quality, go with constant bit rate. Now for 4K, your bit rate is going to be a little bit higher than your standard 1080p. There's a lot more data and information in each bit of footage. So we can quickly, I can drag over here what YouTube recommends. And we can see here that sure enough, they recommend the H.264 codec. And here we're most interested in bit rate. And for 4K video, they're saying, look, for between 24 and 30 frames per second, like 35 to 45 megabits per second is good. I never quite trust the numbers that the man tells me. So I'm probably going to go with the higher bit rate here, the stuff that's more fitting for the 50, 60 frame per second stuff. So I'll go like 55 to 65 megabits per second. That's generally uh, where I'm kind of hanging out with this. So that's why I've got 65 megabits per second. And if I'm going to go VBR, let's say two pass, I'm going to say target bit rate of like 55, a max bit rate of 65, and I'll be good to go. You can see down here an estimated file size, 151 megabytes with a constant bit rate. If we bump it up to 65 megabits per second, you can see estimated file size of 178 megabytes. So, you know, the file, this is a 25 second clip, so it's not a huge clip by any means, uh, but you know, this is what we're working with. So now that we've kind of blown through that, you got a couple other little settings here. We don't need to worry about them. Again, you can choose to use maximum render quality. Again, it's going to make the render take a little bit longer, but it should deliver a higher quality uh, final finished product for you. Everything else you don't need to worry about at this point in time. Now, if you hit the export button, it's going to go ahead and start cranking away and exporting your video. However, sometimes you want to be able to go back to Premiere and continue editing, or you have multiple videos that you want to export. If that's the case, you can hit this Q button. Button. And what that's going to do is send your video or your sequence over to Adobe Media Encoder and you can select this and then hit the little play button up here and Adobe Media Encoder will export your video right here in this window and you can, while it's exporting, you can go back to Premiere and continue editing and working and doing your thing and this will be exported in no time flat. Now, the last thing I want to do before we get going, I want to quickly show you a comparison between three different videos. One that is exported at one megabit per second. This is a 4K video. You can see how atrocious the quality is. It's really bad. The sky looks like it's solid. There's just artifacting. It's it's a ho truly horrendous looking sight is what we have here. Now, this second instance is 
CBR, constant bitrate exported at 65 megabits per second. And this is going to look pretty much the same as your VBR one or two pass are going to be very, very similar at with, you know, with that 65 megabit per second targeted bitrate. You can see the quality is night and day difference. It's a massive, massive difference. And this is a good and acceptable file. You could upload this to YouTube. No problem at all. Now, this third file, and this is just to show you that it, it's not always great to just go totally uncompressed or, you know, have a massive bit rate. Here I went with a bit rate of 200, so 200 megabits per second. And you can see, is there much of a difference? Can you see much of a difference between this and the 65 megabit version of this file? But I'll tell you where the difference is, is the fact that this file size is about two to three, maybe three and a half times bigger than the 65 megabit file size. So that's the difference between a video being, you know, half of a gigabyte and two and a half gigabytes when it comes time to upload and you're not really getting a, a noticeable quality difference. So that's where it's good to kind of find that sweet spot of your megabits per second, upload that, and you will be living life, you'll be loving life, things will be great, and you'll have some great 4K video going up onto YouTube. Okay, well, there you have it. That is what I've got to say about exporting video in 4K for YouTube. We'll discuss things like smart previews and some of the ways to render videos faster uh, in another video. But for now, this is how I like to export 4K video if I'm sending it to YouTube or Vimeo, Facebook, really wherever it's going. The rules are about the same. Uh, so for learning a little bit about render settings and bit rate and constant bit rate versus variable bit rate and one pass and two pass and all the stuff we cover in this tutorial, ladies and gentlemen, for that and so much more, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do. And this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.